Thank you for coming. I know it is easier to make it on the weekend. We had more people during the weekend, but we don't want to stop the service on the weekdays. And as we go through the holy month of Ramadan and more guest speakers are coming, the environment would be warmer and more attachment with this spirit of the holy month of Ramadan. And thank you, Mahdi, for your beautiful scientific approach to the hadith that says, Sumu tasihu, when you fast, you get healthy. Of course, we have to be careful to make it healthy. If we eat too much, both on Maghrib and Suhoor, I don't think we are going to get healthier. We need to still keep the balance in eating and drinking in Iftar and, and Suhoor. But Mahdi is doing pharmacy now and he likes science and medicine and so what he was telling us related to the area of his interest. I have a, a few uh, copies, four or five copies, may not be enough for everyone, of this letter 69 of Nahj al that we are going to start uh, speaking about this letter and we promise if you memorize at least some of the points of this sermon or make note either by your pen or by your cell phone make some notes and uh, as we go through a few sessions of this natural balada studies in few nights if you can write it down and make it like a paper and of course you can do more research on this letter online if you search letter 69 of natural balada you may get some more information online make a paper and inshallah we collect these papers on nights of power and we are going to have a prize from house of wisdom for the winner of the paper of this letter 69 of Najal Balagha. It's letter only one page though in Arabic and uh, we have the copy of both Arabic and English. So English is one page and the Arabic one page. So it's not really a huge letter, it's just one page. But there are 30 important principles that we can learn from this one single letter. So if you at the end can come up with 30 points, that what are those 30 points of this letter? And write it down, first of all, that is something that you remember forever, and then we can share it even online, and people can benefit. So whoever is interested, because it's only five pages, I can first come, first serve, you can come here and get a copy. Inshallah, we'll make more copy on the coming nights. But at this time, those five volunteers who are serious about following this, so it's already copied. So if you don't have Najal Balaga or you don't have printer in your house or whatever, these are already made for you. You can come and get a copy from me. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Muhammad. I come closer. Who is interested to get a copy? Yes. 
صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد. And would you like to come closer a little bit? You know, this policy of House of Islam that doesn't bite anybody. I mean, this is a principle, you know, policy in the House of Islam that never bites anyone. Okay, because uh, we never cheat, right? Uh, cheating is not part of our organization because we already know what happened to those people who cheat, right? You feel bad for this Tiger Wood, now what happened again? Again, story on, on, on TV that uh, he, he was in it, he was number one, right? The one number one golfer in the world. Like happy, healthy, millionaire, he had everything that you can imagine. Well, then what happened for him and his wife, they separated. And now I don't know what happened to their kids. They had how many kids they have? Two or three, right? And uh, then now he was driving and he was stopped drinking and driving. So he had uh, this problem and he didn't want to go through the test, I think. Now he probably lost his driving license. It was interesting today, as I was coming just half an hour ago, the police stopped me too. But not because I was drinking. I uh, actually the the light was uh, yellow, right? I think you have to stop, and it's yellow, right? But uh, it was on the curb, and I, you know, drive very fast because I said, let me get over this. And all of a sudden, I saw the police under the light stopped, and, and I stopped, and the police came and. I was still close to our house, and I said, you know, we are co-worker co police. I'm a police too. I said, wow, well, I said, I'm a spiritual police, and you are just a police. You protect us physically. We protect you spiritually. Actually, I have a service. He said, where? I said, at the House of Islam in, in Dirwan Heights. And uh, I told him that I know it was yellow, and I know that I was a little bit over speed, but that was the service I had to go. And he says, so you don't have any problem in the past and never, you know, suspended or never, you know, your driving license, any problem. I said, no, I, as far as I remember, I never had a major problem in, in driving. And uh, then he said, okay, you know, uh, good luck. And fortunately, he didn't give me any ticket or anything. I could survive. So, uh, my story was very easy tonight, but uh, Tiger Woods' story is very difficult now. Probably, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but it started from cheating, right? I mean, you know, for, uh, uh, we don't have, the, the men who are here, I am sure that they never cheat their wives, and some of you are not even married yet, but uh, uh, whether you married later on or you are already married, that is very, very important. So, Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Nahd al Balagha is a book of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And the month of Ramadan actually is the month of martyrdom of Imam Ali. And I'd like to speak about this a little bit because tonight we don't have two speakers, just one speaker. We have a little bit more time. But this information is really important that, as I said, if you make some notes, you win a big prize at the end, but what we give as a prize is nothing compared to the prize of paradise, inshallah, that you receive by this holy month of Ramadan. Nahj means path, means like manhaj means tariq, means uh, path. Al balagha means eloquence. Uh, it comes from balag also means to, to announce something or uh, communication. So Nahj al is a path of communication. But in this case means path of eloquence in a sense that Sayyid al-Radi or who put together Nahj al -Balagha. I mean he, he worked very hard almost thousand years ago, more than thousand years ago because he uh, died in like uh, uh, 400 and now we are in 1438. So it's 1038 years ago, 
Nahj al-Balaga was gathered. Because before that, the Imam Ali's lecture and letters and words were all over in the books, not as one volume. The first one who made this like a book was Sayyid Radi more than 1,000 years ago. He did not collect all the books, or all the lectures of Imam or letters of Imam. He chose the one with maximum balagha, and this is why he called it Nahj al the one with the highest eloquence and, uh, and the beauty and, and balagha. Uh, recently, a Sayyid, who is a friend of mine in Mashhad, he collected all the letters and uh, actually lectures of Imam Ali, and he made a huge Nahjul Balagha. It is very high to, to carry that. I have a copy of that, and it was very, very heavy. So, but this one has all letters, all lectures, all words. But the one that so far we have been using, the Nahj al of Sayyid Radi, it has 241 khutab, means the sermons of Imam Ali, the lectures of Imam Ali, and 79 letters, al-kutub wa rasail and 480 uh, al-hikam, al-kalimat, the words of wisdom. So this is what Nahj al is, a collection of lectures, letters, and words of wisdom. The longest lecture that we have in Nahj al is the lecture of 192, is called Al-Qasa'a, Khutbat Al-Qasa'a in Nahj al 192, that's the number of that sermon. That is the longest lecture of Imam Ali. If you go to the letters, al kutub wa rasail the letter number 53 in Nahj al and that is the letter that Imam Ali wrote to Malik al ashtar you know, that very famous letter to governor of Egypt. That is the, the longest letter and that is number 53 uh, in Nahjul Balagha. And then, uh, if you go to Al Hikam Wal Kalimat, the words of wisdom, the longest one is uh, number 147, and that is a conversation between Imam Ali and one of his companions, his name was Kumail ibn Ziyad. Kumail ibn Ziyad. That that's the same guy that we do dua kumail, that is for the same companion that Imam spoke with him, and that word is the longest one, number 147 in Nahjul Balagha. So basically, as I mentioned, what we have is a combination of al khutab al kutub al hikam this is one point that is very good for anyone who wants to think about Nahjul Balagha. It's a very, very basic information. Remember that Nahjul Balagha is not really just for Shia, just because we are Shia, we love Ahlul Bayt, and we love uh, the family of the Prophet. You know about George Ordaq, right? George Ordaq was Christian, he was Arab, and he was what nationality? Lebanese, right? He was Lebanese. He passed away, God bless his soul, just a few years ago, four or five years ago. He, ate, he, he, he was 80 some years and he died in Beirut. And he is the one who wrote five books about Imam Ali. One of them is Sautul Adalat al Insaniyya, the sound of uh, a voice of human justice. Uh, this man says, رواعي كلمات علي عليه السلام في نهج البلاغة أثارت في فؤادي شغفا بأن أطالعه مئتي مرة سبحان الله وفي كل مرة فتحت لي فتحة جديدة على أسراره 
وحفظت أكثر خطبه في السغة. Can you imagine a Christian guy? He is saying that when I was a tefl, when I was a kid, I memorized most of the lectures of Imam Ali from Nahjul Balagh. I mean, many of us, we don't even memorize one line of Nahjul Balagh. And how a Christian boy in Beirut memorized most of this khutab that we are talking about, the khutab, 241 lectures of Imam Ali, he is saying most of them. That means almost, you know, almost 200 of them. He memorized. And you know the Nahjul Balagha, the uh, lectures of Imam Ali are so strong. I mean, the words is more difficult than the Quran, right? The Quran is simple. The Arabic in Quran is very simple. But the, the Arabic in Nahjul Balagha is very, very sophisticated. And it's amazing that this guy, a Christian, says, I was a boy, little boy, and I memorized most of the sermons of Imam Ali Nahjul Balagha. Then he said, how many times do you think that I read the entire Nahjul Balagha? Miyatay Marra, 200 times. He read, he said, at least 200 times, I read the entire Nahjul Balagh. Then he says, when I think about Imam Ali, in Abu Ya Ali, he, he addressing, he is addressing Imam Ali, he Ya Ali, in Abu Inna ka a'la min al-Masih, la yakbalu dini. If I say that you are higher than Jesus, I cannot say that because I'm Christian, you know, how Christians, they believe that Jesus is the highest. So my religion doesn't let me to tell you that you are higher than Jesus. But, وَإِنْ أَقُلْ إِنَّهُ أَعْلَى مِنْكَ لَا يَقْبَلُ وَجْدَانِي If I say that Jesus was higher than you, then my conscience doesn't let me to say that. Because you are so great in my soul, in my heart, in my spirit, that my conscience cannot say that someone is higher than you. لا أقول أنت إله. I cannot say that you are God. ولكن أقول أنت بشر. You are a human being, but are you بشر? What kind of human being? لا أدري أي بشر أنت. I don't know what kind of human being you are. فقل لنا أنت يا علي من أنت. I I don't understand. I cannot analyze. Please you come and you tell us who you are. You describe yourself, your character for us. Can you imagine a Christian George or Douglas saying that? Then we have uh, the same man, George Rodon, is saying that, I read this in, he had an interview, like a few months before his death, years back. He said, لَقَدْ عَرَدَ عَلَيَّ بَعْدُ النَّاسِ مِنْ دُوَلِ الْخَلِيجِ مِنْ دُوَلِ الْخَلِيجِ وَمِصْرِ أَنْ أَكْتُبَ فِي عُمَرِ مَثَلًا وَآخِرِينَ لَكِنَّنِي رَفَثْتُ ليس لأنني أرى أن عمرا سيئا لكنني لم أجد من هو أهل بعد علي للكتابة فأقرت قلمي في أن أكتب لشخص غيره He is saying that a lot of people from the Gulf country and Egypt they came to me with lots of money and they said you wrote about Imam Ali now you write something about Umar too but I couldn't do that. Not, I am not going to insult Omar or anybody. That's not to insult anybody. But my point is that after writing about Imam Ali, how can I write about anybody else? What is there that I can say about anybody else? After knowing Ali, after writing about Ali, after talking about Imam Ali, it's very hard really to talk about anybody else. There is nothing that I can say to be attractive about anybody after talking about Imam Ali. This is a Christian. You know how honorable our position is? We really don't appreciate. 
I mean, it is very obvious, but this is true. Now, you know, one of the, there are a lot of sharh ala Nahj al balagha There are a lot of ulama who made comment about Nahj al balagha And one of them is Ibn Abi al-Hadid. Ibn Abi al-Hadid, he was a Sunni Mu'tazili scholar. He was not a Shia. And he lived almost 800 years ago. So 800 years ago, he made a sharh, a comment, a commentary on Nahj al balagha and the entire Nahj al balagha very famous sharh Nahj al balagha uh, Ibn Abi al-Hadid. He is explaining about one of the lectures of Ma'ali. He mentioned lecture 221. He says it was 216, but when I checked Nahj al balagha I didn't find it there because, you know, sometimes you get confused about the numbering of the lectures and the letters of Imam. So you need to know the number, but you need to know the subject as well. So I could find the, the real number because I knew the subject. So when I did the research, I realized that the khutbah that Ibn Abi al-Hadid is talking about, and he said, Khutbah 216 in Nahj al of faith, Sayyid Radi, that you and I, we have it now, it is number 221. He says, he is talking about this khutbah, that Imam Ali is talking about death and alam al-akhirah and, you know, uh, the life after this dunya, and he starts from reciting al-haqm al-taqatur, hatta zurtum al-maqabir, كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألون يومئذ عن النعيم. So Imam Ali recite this chapter, short chapter, and he explain. This guy Ibn Abi Hadid says, إني أقسم بما تقسم الأمم كلها به. لقد قرأت هذه الخطبة منذ خمسين سنة وإلى الآن أكثر من ألف مرة سبحان الله ألف مرة He is saying that I'm dealing with Nahj al-Balagha and working with Nahj al-Balagha and reading this Nahj al-Balagha for the last 50 years and I'm telling you that I read this خطبة of 221 that Imam Ali is talking about the reality of death and Alam al-Barzakh and the day of judgment and heaven and hell. The spiritual world, I read this lecture more than 1,000 times. Why? He is saying that any time that I read this khutbah again, I'm more impressed. I'm more excited about what Imam Ali is saying. And I feel a total fear in my soul of my guilt in this life and hereafter. That is just amazing me that every time I read it, like I'm reading something new. This guy is not even a Shi'i. He's a Sunni. And he made this commentary on natural Balagha and he's talking about this. Sometimes you think that, really, how Imam Ali knows all of this? I mean, now he's talking about just one letter or one lecture. How Imam Ali, 1400 years ago, he didn't go to Harvard University or, you know, uh, uh, Georgetown, Washington, D. I mean, how? How Imam Ali knows about all this dunya and akhirah and, and the nature and heavens and earth and human life and uh, spirituality and medicine and all this science and all amazing things that he's talking about in Ajal Balagha? How he knows? Well, for one reason he knows the Quran. I mean, if you read the Quran, if you realize the Quran, يَهْدِ لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَخْوَمْ Ocean of information in the Qur'an itself. So Imam Ali has access to the ocean of information of the Qur'an. That is one 
source of information and education of Imam Ali. Another thing, he has access to the knowledge of the Holy Prophet. That he said, "Allamani Rasulullah alf bab min al ilm yafta'u min kull bab alf bab." The Prophet taught me and gave me keys to one thousand gates of knowledge. That through each gate I open another thousand gates of knowledge. Means one thousand to one thousand one million gates of knowledge. Subhanallah. I mean, it's very hard even to imagine how this works. What kind of communication of receiving one million gates of knowledge as the best disciple of the Prophet in this university that the, that the Ustad, the teacher is the Prophet and the student, the disciple is about Ali. In addition to the Quran, in addition to the teachings and trainings of the Holy Prophet, Imam Ali gets inspiration from the angels. He doesn't receive revelation, but inspiration. You know, you and I, we can, if we get to the level of piety and spirituality, we can receive some inspiration. I mean, like say the Maryam. She received even the angel. Maryam was not a prophet. She was not a messenger. But she received the angel. She was just a, a faithful lady. So this is possible. You don't have to be a prophet to communicate with the angels. It's possible. All we need is just a receiver, right? Now this auditorium is so quiet because we are not using a receiver. What if you use all your cell phone and you bring a TV, all kinds of music, all kinds of heal and rock, all kinds of pictures and everything in this auditorium, you just need a receiver. Imam Ali had this spiritual reception, so he received this information from the angels and also the inspiration from God directly. Is it that God guides us? Like when we say, اَهْدَنَا الصَّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Sometimes directly Allah would guide us to navigate the, the journey of life through His direct light of guidance. So don't be surprised that how Imam Ali had all this information and imagine that all this Najjul Balagha is not everything that he said. Because they didn't record everything that Imam Ali used to say, right? I mean, it's what, not like today that all this, you know, media and this digital, you know, information and communication, people didn't write at that time. You can imagine how much information was there that after 1400 years ago, still we have so many of his khutbah and so many of his words. And amazingly, he expressed all of this in less than five years. Look at this. Because Imam Ali, when he was martyred, he was 63 years old. And all of the things that we have of the words of Imam Ali related to the last five years of his life when he was a governor, when he was officially an imam and leader of the community. So it's very important to, to imagine that at the time of the Prophet, he was most of the time silent. He didn't, when Prophet is there, he didn't want to talk. And after the Prophet for 25 years, they deprived him from expression because Imam Ali was not in power. The other people were in charge. So he didn't have an opportunity to address people. So the time that really he got a chance to talk was like four years and nine months of his governance. And all we have is from there. How can you do this level of accomplishment in such a short time in all these different issues? If you read Nahjul Balagha, talking about all kinds of scientific things that people didn't know at that time, but was not appreciation. Imam Ali said, 
You can ask me any question you want before I go, gone, before I die. You can imagine what kind of question they ask him. Somebody uh, stood up from the audience and said, Oh, now you know everything? Can you tell me how many hairs in my you know, face and my head? Can you count how many? I mean, now, what kind of answer? Like you know, I just said, there are one million hairs. I mean, you know, how you want to count it, right? You know, how you want to confirm. No matter what number, even if he knows the true number, and he gives, well, there are like uh, uh, 50 million hairs in your, your head. The guy is not going to even accept it. Oh, no, 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 no. How do you know that? So Imam doesn't get involved in this argument. He said, well, if you want to know that how many hair in your head and your, your beard, that's the number of shaitans that are operating your heart. Can you tell me how many shaitans in your mind and your heart? That is exactly the number of hair in your head and your face. Because this guy was a hypocrite, right? This was not a normal, like an honest, honorable individual. But by raising a question to challenge Imam Ali, like he stood up to say, no, you don't know anything. It's just a claim. And that was the right answer for such a fitna maker. So really, this is very important to know the, the sources of knowledge of Imam Ali that George Jordan is talking like that. And then Ibn Abi al-Hadid says all this. Not only that, if you go online, you can find this document that when Kufi Annan was the uh, Secretary General of uh, United Nations, United Nations, and they had a conference of, uh, uh, about human rights in New York. At the end of that conference, Kofi Annan, the Secretary General of the time, he made one statement and he signed it. And the statement is in both Arabic and English because that conference was the combination of so many heads of states also from the Arab world and from the Muslim world. And the statement reads like that. The Caliph Ali ibn Abi Talib is considered the fairest governor who appeared during human history. So we advise Arab countries, thank you, to take Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as an example in establishing a regime based on justice and democracy and encouraging knowledge. This is not a statement by a Shia or by a Sunni. This is Kofi Annan, Secretary General of United Nations. Inna Khalifat al-Muslimin Ali ibn Abi Talib يعتبر أعدل حاكم ذهر في تاريخ البشر بعد الرسول محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لذلك ننسح البلدان العربية إلى الاقتداء به كمثال لتأسيس نظام قائم على العدالة والديمقراطية وتشجيع المعرفة سنت أميزين this statement that they asked the, the Muslim government. But Muslim government, Arab government, you know, Sakara of Yahlam in Is he talking about the Saudi Arabia, this milking cow? That with one shouting, Trump goes there and get $400 billion. Somebody was saying, oh, it's good. At least he got the money he brings to America and you get more business here and it's good for us. I said, yeah, it's a good amount of money, but the price is the blood of those Yemenis and Palestinian and Afghanis and Iraqis and Syrian. They get all this weapon and kill those people in Yemen. And now the Yemenis kids are dying out of Weba and cholera and all these diseases because they don't have drinking water even. And when they drink this contaminated water 
and there is no medicine, no antibiotic, and there is no even a hospital because the hospital is already destroyed. Today I had an access to, to send some help for, uh, there was an organization that we, we rely and they were asking for helping the the Aytam for Yemen, the, the orphans in Yemen, and these poor people. And we had, uh, you know, some, some budget for that. He said, let's send everything that we have. And subhanAllah, tonight somebody brought us a check, exactly the number of the amount that we gave in the morning, we receive a check exactly the same amount. Somebody brought the check and said, this is a donation. And you open this, so, subhanAllah. It's just in the morning we did that, in the evening Allah replaced that money. And I advise you brothers and sisters to, to do so, to help, especially now. You know, sometimes you said the Syrian orphans or Iraqis or Afghanis or Lebanese, they all deserve, the, the orphans are orphans. But now in Yemen it's like Nar Jahannam. It's very, very difficult. And these guys who arrange a reception for $70 million for Trump. What do they eat? It's just an animal. $70 million, I mean, what is it? All this khumur and alcohol and for everybody they bring a kharouf, you know, on every table in front of everybody there is a kharouf. And un unbelievable. And then they call themselves like governor. Where is Imam Ali and where is like King Salman? This is Imam Ali, he says, Wallah, if they give me a qalib al-sab'ah, anything under the sky, means the entire planet of the earth, everything on this earth, if they give me the whole thing, and they tell me, Ali, there is one condition, you must hurt an ant. Wallah, I'm not accepting that. Can you imagine? He's saying, you give me everything on this earth, under the sky, and the condition, the price is to hurt an ant, not to kill an ant, just to hurt it. How to hurt it? Deprive an ant from its food. He said, Wallah, ma fa'altu. I don't do it. You know how honored we should be as Shia, of lovers of this Imam Ali? And how can we appreciate, how can we show gratitude to Imam Ali of his personality, so to al-adalat al-insaniyya. And then you see the King Salmani exchanging this like uh, necklace and uh, It's a joke, isn't it? I mean, just like a joke. My goodness, the same guy went to Israel, they didn't give you anything. No, no hadaya, nothing, right? You know, nothing. They had a tea or something. And just a normal. Then he went to Vatican. There is no gift. I mean, he, he met with the Pope. I heard that the Pope gave him a book. You know, gave him a book. But still, his wife showed more respect for Vatican than Khadr al-Harmani Sharifain. When she went there, she was not ready to put her scarf. As a matter of fact, not only she did not do the scarf, she opened, even her legs were there, like, you know, not, not, nothing like modest. But when she came to Vatican, she had a scarf, right? The Trump wife, she had a scarf over there. So they gave him millions of dollars of gift, like a joking, one after another, one after the, the, the world is laughing at us. It's, what is this? Is this your Islam? One side of it is ISIS. Awful, and another, the good part of it is, you know, King of Saudi Arabia. That is joking too. And it's so embarrassing for us as Muslims. What is this? What is this? And Kofi Annan said that if you want to have honor, you look at Imam Ali is that example of fairness and justice. If you want to establish democracy and freedom, look at Imam Ali. So now, after this introduction about Nahjul Balagha, I'd like to start this letter of 69. But I don't know if I start tonight, uh, if you are ready for that, it's almost 11.30.
Do you have any question? Maybe instead of I start, I don't want to kill the khutbah, right? I don't want to kill it. I want to start when you are totally ready for that because I want you to read it. Even those of you who didn't receive the copy, please go online and say letter number 69 in Najm Balagha. You can find it in Arabic, you can find it in English. There are 30 points in this one page of letter. I want you to read it, and inshallah in the next couple of nights, I'm going to go through explanation of this letter, the points that Imam Ali is, is making about uh, the principles that he is teaching his friend al Harith al-Hamdani. So the writer of this letter is Imam Ali, and the receiver is a man whose name is al Harith al-Hamdani. Hamdani apparently is a name of a tribe from Yemen that was a very loyal tribe to Imam Ali. And Harith was from that tribe, but he moved to Iraq and he settled in Kufa. So he was with Imam Ali when Imam Ali was in Kufa as a governor. Harith was there and he was a very, very sincere companion of Imam Ali, and we have some, some story about this closeness. So Imam Ali is talking in this letter to Harith. He talks about the importance of the Quran as a path of salvation and truth. He talks about life, about death, talks about social life, interaction with people, about self-discipline, about how to control your tongue, your temper. He is talking about how to promote love and mercy and passion in the society, how to express your gratitude and your appreciation to God and to people, uh, how to save something from this life for your hereafter, how to maximize your attention to Ibadat and especially Salat al Jumma, how to be careful about this life and about your friends, he talks about friendship and how you must be careful not to be fooled with evil friends. There are so many principles of wisdom that Imam Ali, and I counted to 30. Now you may find even more than that. You may be more careful and better in mathematics than me, and you mentioned, you may come with even 35 or 40 points in this letter. I like really to have this not the lecture. Alhamdulillah, we have a good number for a class. Let us look at this lecture as a class, as Nahj al studies, and at least learn one letter from Imam Ali. Then, when we leave after a few nights, and we think about what did I learn of spending my time one hour is a long time. So what was really the compensation for the time that I spent in the mosque? Then you know that you have knowledge about at least one letter of Imam Ali. Then you can share this letter with your friends, your Facebook, your you know, emails, the family. I think that is a gift from Ramadan and a gift from Nahj al that inshallah we start this letter from tomorrow night. Tonight was just a letter introduction. If you have any question, by the way, before uh, about this conversation, about this subject, or any other subject. No question? Okay, when we inshallah go through this khutbah, you are going to have more questions now. Because we, we don't have now enough information about um, this letter? Yes, maybe do you have a question? You know, even when I think about that, really, I was crying when I, today when I was doing some research about this khutbah, and, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was sitting in the library and I was going through this letter, and for a moment, going through this letter, 
You know, my eyes were, were full of tears then. Subhanallah, what kind of legacy, what kind of Ahl Bayt? We are talking about 1400 years ago. And it is, as you said, and as we mentioned, George Ortao, being a non-Muslim, for him to say that he read this Nahtul Bala at least 200 times, and he memorized most of the, the sermons of Imam Ali. So really, uh, the, if non-Muslims, they know about that, many of them, they would appreciate. You know, sometimes I speak in the churches or colleges or interfaith gathering who are coming here, and when they hear some of these things, they are amazed that we had no idea, we had no clue of, is this really Islam? Because how do you know about this Islamophobia, Shia phobia, Iran phobia, Mahdi phobia, anything it is about phobia. That part of it is really politics that they are making this irrational fear. It is not rational, it's irrational fear. But those people who are uh, looking for truth, yes, if they read Natural Balagha, if they read the Quran, you know, part of this khutbah is about the Qur'an. When I go through it, maybe tomorrow night, what does Imam Ali say in this letter about the Qur'an? It's just amazing that we have this Qur'an, this deep ocean of wisdom. But then many Muslims even don't understand it. You know, ISIS reads the same Qur'an and it comes to conclusion that is okay to behead innocent people in Shah Ramadan. I mean, the first day of Ramadan in Afghanistan, you know, 20 people were killed because a crazy guy goes to the masjid. Month of Ramadan, month of Ibadah, you go to the masjid, people who are fasting and praying, and you kill them? What kind of logic is this? It is Ramadan, it is fasting, it is mosque, and innocent people, and you kill them, and you will proud. And this guy read the Quran that, you know, Saudi Arabia wanted to read, and then come to this conclusion. So really, that's part of our, uh, our challenge. I mentioned last night that really we are responsible to, to share this knowledge, this information. People make bad decisions about Islam because they had bad information about Islam. If they have right information about our religion, they make right judgment about our religion. And who's supposed to provide them with the right information? If I don't do it, if you don't do it, if we don't do it, who else? We expect non-Muslims to come and do our homework? Was this your question or I just answered different questions? You know, one thing is that uh, if you go to Najib Allah and just you read it and you don't really uh, go to the commentary and understand it correctly, you don't get too much out of it. So you have to really think about it. Natural Bilal is not an easy book to read. And that is why, even if you go through this uh, English translation, it doesn't give you too much. For this reason, th those scholars who made commentary about Natural Bilal, they made like 20 volumes about that one volume. That's how much it really needs explanation. It's so brief. It is so uh, beautiful that you need really to understand, you need to teach. I mean, like any other text, that's why you go to the college. You, you cannot just get the text and just read it by yourself. You need a teacher. You need a shah. So uh, we need to really explain it to non-Muslims so they, they understand it. May Allah bless you and bless your time and your effort. Uh, inshallah, you would uh, uh, bring more thawab and more reward by encouraging other people to take this opportunity. We are talking about Imam Ali. Like if Imam Ali was here, he would share the same words. So we are quoting Imam Ali. 
is uh, full of light and guidance and direction and passion, let us mobilize our community and say, don't be tired just because you, you, know, you didn't eat, eat for 17 hours. Honestly, I was so happy that I didn't have to eat and drink because distraction, killing my time. I said, okay, I know that there's nothing else to do. My time is free to work. I like it this way. So, uh, inshallah, be part of this uh, education by encouraging more people to tell them that knowledge is better than argila. I mean, we are not depriving from argila, but, you know, this, one of the guys said, as salatu khayrun min al like, uh, prayer is better than sleeping. That's obviously, it's better, but we are saying that this Nahjal Balagh is better than argili. So, come to the Masajid and get information. Allah bless you. Salaam Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.